What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers but with a new mini-series this time. Um, I've decided that the big carrier challenge that uh, people have sort of kind of voted on as being one that I definitely have to do, I want to do on a really massive scale, I want to make it really cool. And so I've decided that instead of not show you the sort of process of me building this thing up and what I'm using in it, I'll bring it out as a sort of mini-series. So this is going to be the first and today we're going to have a look at my concept for how I'm going to do the, the fighter bays on this particular craft. So in front of me here is the original sort of concept quick design I did for how this is going to function. And for those of you who have seen some of my other videos, you may well recognize this flip mechanism from my totally civilian ship and I used it on that to hide some turrets inside the hull. Well on this one I've decided it's actually where I'm going to attach the fighters. The idea being that instead of having bays that you have to navigate in and out of, the fighters will actually launch from the outside of the craft, but when needed, they're inside the craft, inside the hangar bays. So this is kind of the fighter I've designed, and as you can see, it's it's very, very basic, and it's hooked on via a merge, merge block and a connector, enabling it to be completely resupplied, and the rocket launchers, the reactors, there's a small cargo bay, everything on there can be resupplied through that connector. And uh, this variant is a, a pilotable one, and that was what I originally wanted to do, but I then obviously decided I wanted to use projectors in this as well as the method of how you create these ships, but also how you repair them. So unfortunately at the moment, for some reason or another, there is a little bit of a bug whereby you can't build cockpits with projectors. The two things just don't work together. So for the time being, I've had to switch to a drone variant. So if we skip along this direction, uh, and I'll jump into the sort of slightly more advanced, much more finished version of this hangar. In this one, I have sort of a much more up-to-date drone version. And as you can also see, I've built a little setup designed now to, combined with the projector that's there, build and repair this craft. So if I um, jump up here and there should be a control panel on one of these corners. No, oh, no control panel. That's very handy. All right. Instead of messing around, let's just jump and show you the real deal. Of course, I mocked it up into something a lot more serious. So here we have... Basically, this is not going to be what the carrier looks like. This is not going to be part of the carrier. This is just one of those hangers, and the whole point of this was to make it modular so you could duplicate them really easily. So that is one of those copied sideways a few times, and then I stuck a, a line of tubes down the middle to connect it all together, and then I did the same thing on the other side but flipped around. And if we go in, I sort of pretty did up so you get an idea of what it might look like as a kind of fighter hangar bay. So here we are inside the bay, a couple of levels of floors, these things are all docked in the hangars, and down this end we have uh, the timers that are going to make all this work, and the reactors and cargo storage, because this is all hooked up to the conveyors, as I said. So now, of course, for the real deal. So if I come down this end, and on this button panel here we have all the useful buttons set up at the moment. Again, this is just a mock-up so that I can show you what it might look like in, in actual use, and hit this button here it will activate the production chain. And the idea would be this would be in the cockpit someplace and the captain of the vessel would simply hit that button when the fighters are on board or even when all the fighters have been lost in order to replenish your stocks. And there we have, in all six bays now, a completed fighter. Uh, and yeah, to make these six bays again, all I did was copy and paste the same model over and over again and then I put this walkway in. So you can do that and the groups are set up in such a way that it, it will scale indefinitely and you still only need these buttons and they will always work. So we've now built our ships, so let's hit this one to actually rotate them and put them out ready for launch. And I have had to put um, a bunch of gyroscopes and thrusters and so on on the back of this because it is a ship, it's not a station, so it moves around in space a lot when this is happening. And there we go, out ready to launch. And on the bottom, obviously they've got a merge, box and a merge block and a connector, and I've got those set up simply to be turned off um, by a group, and then you're off ready to fly. And of course, these are remote control ones, so we have these six stations down here ready to control those and go and do whatever business you might. But the other cool thing with these is the fact that you don't necessarily have to just build things with them. So I'm going to sort of take the corner of this craft off here as if it's been, as if it's been damaged a bit. And the strange thing with this, and I, I don't know why it behaves like this, again, it's the projectors being a little strange at times. Once you've done that, so let's flip her back in, once I've done that, I will have to turn the merge blocks on and off in order for the projectors to like work out it's part of the same ship or something. I, I'm not sure why. And the same happens when I 
um, if, if I take off, if I turn those merge blocks off, when I come back down again, you connect up once and then you're gonna have to toggle the merge blocks on and off. Uh, because I never detached the ship here, it's not gonna need it this time. You can see this is all lit up white, so it's ready to be built. And again, all it would take is that same, so let's have a look. I will also um, get rid of this one here. Get rid of this one completely. So there we go. The uh, the squadron has come back from their their fight. We've got one damaged. Four of them made it back fine. One was lost and one was damaged. And the captain would literally just need to hit that same button again. And then very quickly on this short timer, it's going to replenish the missing fighters, and it's going to repair the broken ones. And there we are, ready to launch once again. Uh, and the remaining two buttons on here, just in case anyone's wondering, this was uh, an emergency button. This um, raises and lowers these pistons, just in case I mess something up and it's in the wrong place. And this one here is the one to launch them, so it turns off both the connector and the merge block. And that's because those connectors have the sucking effect that means that you can't very easily launch. So there you go, that's kind of the concept for how I want the hangers to work. And I think it's a pretty cool way of um, having them, A, not really tightly packaged inside the hull there's none of this flying around inside having to navigate your ship inside other ships you know when it's time to launch you're on the side ready to go and the crew on your ship can either be manning those once they fix these uh, cockpit problems or they can be controlling the environment control from the main carrier itself as it launches fleets of these drones um, the only other thing sort of I'll mention is this is the application I've decided to use for this. The other thing I did think you could do with it, as I've got sort of mocked up over here, is actually use this as a kind of rotational system. So I've set up two projectors, and there's one of these ships on both sides here. And the idea is you could be building this one while this one is launching, and then you flip it around, and the same thing happens. So you know, on one side of it, it's building the craft, and on the other side of it, it's launching the craft simultaneously. I didn't want to do that because it cause it leaves stuff exposed. So on my carrier, I want things to be nicely tucked inside and nicely hidden. But just a thought for you, maybe you fancy trying this out, using this concept for yourself, and that might be another way of doing it in a more sort of production line style way rather than my sort of slightly more defensive approach to things. So all I'll do now is just quickly jump in here and show you um, kind of how I've got things grouped up and set up. So. Again, this uses what I did last time where there are groups actually on the ships themselves that only exist when you are when the ships are built. So if I go in here, we've got this. This is the um, sort of the timer system in order to, as it says, resupply the ships. We have a pistons up and down. The only important thing with this is, um, oh, interesting. The pistons up and down, that's the wrong one. That's why interesting. Open closed bays is what I wanted. And in here we have this, fighter thrust on and off. That's a group on the fighters themselves. If you don't have that there, they will actively resist trying to be spun round and in doing so burn holes through the side of your ship. Not a good thing to have. Um, but in these, it, it's a very straightforward one. Just think of it in order. So this one obviously moves the piston and then the, the time the piston takes is this delay on the next timer and then this one does the welding and so on. So you just need to, when you're doing these timer setups, think in order of what you want to happen and then remember that the time it takes is always going to be on the next timer. So that's kind of how I've got all this stuff set up. There's just a few groups up here, which are obviously the connectors and the mergers. These are for each hanger so that I can easily sort of group those together. And then this fighter thrust and release, these are the ones that are actually on the ships themselves. Uh, and that's so that once you're in the ships, first of all, you have some control over the fighter, but also it's better to release from the carrier by turning off the merge block on the fighter than it is to release from the carrier by turning off the merge blocks on the carrier. So that's how I've got that set up there. So I hope you found that interesting, guys. I think this is a sort of an interesting, really compact way of making you know, quite a large projector-based construction system that doesn't have to have all these corridors and openings and can also have the sort of the sides of the ship really closed in and protected. You know, from the, where this is now, I can have this right in the center of the ship I wanted to build out from the sides and it would still be a perfectly effective way of doing things. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found the idea interesting. If you did, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It really helps me and the channel out. And of course, if you've got any ideas for this carrier yourself, chuck them out there. Now's the time for this, this big challenge to go. I am as I said, trying to make this super duper advanced, cram in everything I can into this this ship, make it a really big series, really big project. So if you've got anything you think that's got to be on there, tell me about it. I want to I want to hear it. 
So thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I will catch you next time.